Hi everybody, welcome to today's edition of Southwark Live. Today I'm really, really happy to be able to, to talk to Rosemary Cronin, who's joining us today. Um, Rosemary is an artist, a, a writer, an educationalist and lecturer um, with the research-based practice in art um, that focuses on, on topics like gender, on psychoanalysis, on subversion, uh, Rosemary has exhibited widely the Freud Museum, the ICA, the National Portrait Gallery, the South London Gallery. Her film piece Reverie was selected by the Guggenheim Foundation as part of their Under the Same Sun season in 2016. Uh, she has published widely and also taught at the University of the Arts London and the Royal College of Art and is currently an outreach practitioner for UAL. Hi Rosemary, how are you today? Hi John, um, it's lovely to be here and thanks for having me. I probably shouldn't broadcast this too much but Southwark College is one of my favourite um, colleges when I come and visit. Um, so it's always a joy to see your team and to see your lovely students. So hello to anyone that I know already who's watching. Oh that's great to hear. <laughs> Excellent. So what I wanted to focus on today, Rosemary, was, um, you know, our students are really interested, our art and design students are really interested in, in um, the practicalities of, of how they'll find their way in the world when they leave college, whether they're going to go into higher education after they leave us, or whether they're trying to get into work, or whether they're trying to actually strike out, you know, on their own as a practicing artist, all those kind of things. So what I wanted to talk to you about was, you know, uh, things to do with your own experience of being a, a practitioner and also about your you know your views as a as an educationalist on on what art and design graduates kind of need to succeed like maybe I could start off by asking you um, what what jobs have you done through your life to get where you are now yeah um so I should just say, uh, because it's a really weird time, that I graduated during the last recession. Um, it was a really scary time. So those of you that are studying art and design and are thinking, oh goodness, <laughs> what's coming? How do I navigate this? Um, I just want to reassure you, um, keep positive. And I've always tried to have an aim of where I want to go and what I want to be doing, but also been open to things along the way. So. I've been everything from an art fair assistant to waitress, barmaid. I've even done some cleaning jobs, anything that I felt like I needed at that time. Um, but I guess the thing that really kicked me off was when I was 17. Um, so I'm from Watford. It's a pretty rubbish place, to be honest. And there's no kind of museums or galleries there, or at least there weren't when I was 17 there. And I remember researching and finding that Tate had a programme for young people. And that was Tate Modern, so just around the corner from Southwark College. Um, and it was raw canvas. It was a group for young people. And I applied because I wanted to meet other young people that were interested in art and design. Uh, I didn't know what it would lead to. And I certainly didn't know it would end up to me being an artist. But... I did a training program there, which was free, and they still run this program. So my first tip is probably to look at museums, galleries and arts organisations near you and to see what they're offering for young people um, and for people your age. Um, I've worked with all sorts of different um, museums and galleries, um, but Tate was the first and it led to a paid position, which then just got the ball, ball rolling. Um, I then went on to be an event crew and I went around the country delivering animation workshops for Tate. That was such a bizarre time. I spent a year living in premier inns and delivering um, workshops in school playgrounds, but it gave me a real sense of what was happening outside of London too. Um, I've also done stuff like internships um, and I've done kind of charity shop dressing and all sorts of things. Um, so I guess, like I said earlier, have an aim of where you want to get to, but be open to what happens along the way too. Okay. Can you tell us a bit about your, um, your path of studying, uh, Rosemary? You know, the places you were, you were at, the courses that you did when you were in, in your student days? 
yeah absolutely so when i um was at royal canvas at tate i met loads of other young people that were just slightly older than me and were at art school none of my parents had been to um university actually they finished their education at 12 and 15 like 1950s london um so i was the first of my family to think about going to university um and i was tentative with it but meeting these other people that were slightly older than me i thought actually maybe i could do this so that inspired me to do a foundation and a foundation's great because it's free and it gave me the freedom to navigate whether i wanted to do textiles or film or fine art uh, graphics and i had some great tutors there who helped me really hone down my interests and were actually brutally honest about what I was good at or what, and what I wasn't. Um, so I then studied at Chelsea, I did my BA um, and I worked all through my degrees as well, running workshops for communities um, and kids and all sorts of different groups to sustain just living in London. And then I graduated, as I said, into a recession, did every kind of job, and then when I felt like I needed a next step, I then did my MA again at Chelsea because I had been invited to be part of a research group by my tutors uh, from my bachelor's degree, so my three year degree. And they were so encouraging and it was a really supportive environment. Um, and I could only really afford to do a one year MA. So that meant Chelsea really. And I just went for it. Um, and I just finished studying my PG cert, which is for if you want to be a teacher. Um, so that's it, really. That was all my studying. Right. OK, so that's really interesting. While you were while you were at art college, you um, you were doing um, community outreach programs. You were you were you were finding a way to make a living through through doing that, through teaching art in the community. Yeah, I started off assisting. So I. Um, I think it was one summer Tate said oh there we've actually had um, a rise in kind of um, people engaging with our families programs and we need a couple more hands on decks is there anyone from the youth program that would like some experience and it was paid so I was like yes definitely um, and so I helped out and it was crazy to begin with we were on um, level three of Tate Modern and it was non-stop it was a, a summer where it was particularly rainy so lots of people were coming to museums and galleries and i just learned from the people that had been doing that job for a bit longer and i really got on well with them and we just had fun i think that's the main thing that i would say every job that i've stuck at i've stuck at it because i've really enjoyed it even the ones in bars because being amongst people that you enjoy being with and doing stuff that that pays you in other ways that money can't um so yeah and then i just gradually started to feel a bit more confident in running my own workshops um and that only came through assisting people that were really great and generous in in showing me how to do it and best practice mm. So did, did you did you know that the kind of the kind of art that you wanted to make by the time you finished um, your 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 degree had you kind of narrowed it down into what you what was it? Ab oh, oh, sorry, yeah. <laughs> no, I um I was probably really irritating to teach as a student because I spent the first year being really excited about living on my own and and living in London and finding new friends and finding new places and getting involved in the art scene and working out how it worked um, and that is something I'd, I'd really recommend is um, when you find the part of the art world whether it's theatre or design or fine art that you really like spend time trying to work out how this world operates um, and who who's in there doing what different jobs and different stuff um, and then I spent the second year really reading a lot I tried out loads of different things I hadn't done before, like sculpture and um, filmmaking. But I still hadn't really worked out what my art was going to be. And I definitely didn't know how I was going to make money from my art. I just kind of carried on. Uh, I went to every lecture. So I was a good student in that sense. I turned up to everything. I listened. I was present. I was engaged. But I still didn't know 
who I was as an artist and really that only kind of came together in the last six months of my degree when I started everything fell into place uh, my style of painting how it underpinned um, or how my theory underpinned it how my personal views my politics everything that I had experienced um, it all came together in those last six months and then I sold all of my degree show work and I must say I didn't sell it all in one go Saatchi did not come in and buy it all up um, he nearly did though um, but I sold bits to different people and that's something that I'm, I was really happy about because it meant that a different piece of my artwork was going to a different part of the world with a different person who could share it with their people that they shared it with um, and I'm still friends with a lot of my collectors who, who buy my work. Um, but that money, so selling my degree show, I saved the money and then put it into the next wave of my art career. So yeah, that was my journey at art school, but I had no idea what kind of an artist I wanted to be. I just kind of looked at artists who I admired and, and tried to think about my own place within the art world. For you, um... Is it, did there come a point where you where you kind of went um, okay well I, I've kind of I, I've learned everything I need to learn now in terms of knowledge or techniques or whatever and thing, or is it is it do you, do you find it's an ongoing process how, how, how do you, what's what's your feelings about that yeah so I worked in museum and gallery education for quite a while and I still mm -hmm. do bits with museums and galleries mm -hmm. and. I was quite surprised at how many uh, people within museums and galleries um, got turned off from learning. Um, and so I kind of made it um, a point for myself that I'll never stop learning. And um, maybe that's me being naive, but even if it's learning, like you say, a different technique or a different skill, or just listening to a talk once a week, um, watching something that I wouldn't necessarily choose to watch, I think it's really important to keep that curiosity um, because that shows within the work and that shows within you as a person as well. Um, and it keeps me excited and keeps me, keeps me going. Right. Okay. Um, so, so when you're working, when you're making things now, Rosemary, what, how, how, what kind of things do you spend your time doing now? What's the, what's the bulk of your, I mean, I, I, I'm not, I guess I'm not really talking about the lockdown situation now, mm. but sort of more generally, how does how does your day go? There's no real um, pattern or shape. I was watching actually a great documentary that Sarah Lucas talks about her, the way that she makes, and she says, I'm not an artist that gets up at eight in the morning every day and clocks into the studio and goes, right, now I'm making. And I completely empathise with that. Um, for me, my days spent, and I guess it's important to be honest here that um, most artists don't just uh, spend their days within a studio. Um, you'll spend your day doing all sorts of things. Um, so whether it's going to meet people. Um, so for example, just before lockdown, I was working on a performance for the Freud Museum. Uh, so I'd meet with the curators, I'd meet with the performers. Um, I was also, it was a research led uh, piece. So I was interviewing um, women who had been um, subject to burnout and the idea that we burn out um, mentally when we over exhaust ourselves. So I was interviewing them. Then I would be kind of looking up how um, I might stage this piece. So what materials was I gonna use? What were the performers gonna be wearing? What did the graphics for the invite look like? Um, so your day is really varied and that's what is the beauty of being an artist. If right. you want to be an artist that just sticks with painting, um, you'll still be going out and about collecting bits for whatever makes your paintings, whether it's the materials or the ideas. Okay, that's great. Thanks. Yeah. Do you, do you like to, um, do you like to work with people around you or, or do you like to work in isolation? Do you like to work inside? Do you, I mean, do, you, do you listen to music when you're working? <laughs> I guess those are the kind of things that I know my students have, have sometimes asked. Yeah. Um, so when I graduated and I had that money and I could make on my own and I got given 
um, what seems like a really great commission for a celebrity, but that's another story. Um, I, I had this bunch of money and it was great. I, I never really expected to have that. Um, and I thought this is going to be great. And by about day three of working on my own, it was really miserable. I missed um, having that community environment of a studio. So I looked at how much money I had and I set some aside and asked my friend if he wanted to come and help me. I'm only five foot and a lot of my paintings are six foot or, or bigger. So he's really tall. So it was definitely really handy at helping me on a practical level, but also just being there as somebody to hang out with. And um, that's probably why I work in performance now. I'll work with costume designers, stylists and musicians. I'm always playing music. Uh, music really drives me um, and I'm quite varied in what I listen to and for my performances there's always um, a varied soundtrack to them um, so yeah I try and keep things um, as varied as possible and I also have a really nice dialogue with my performers um, I don't tell them what to do I give them instructions and maybe starting points so remember a time that you felt like this can you bring that to the performance can you bring that within your movements um or i'll say to them i want this to be a really empowering experience for you so i did a piece at the national gallery where um most of the artworks are depictions of white people in religious spaces um so I decided that it was really important for Pride um, Week. I had been invited to create a performance that brought a more inclusive kind of representation of spirituality um, and the world that's around us now within that space. Um, so that was really important for me. And there was a dialogue around how people would feel when they would be performing, but also being looked at um, and how the audience would digest all of that as well. Okay, I'll, I'll just say for people listening, actually, I really recommend if anyone hasn't that they go and have a look at Rosemary's website to get a flavour of her work, because there's some really interesting examples there. Um, Rosemary, one of the themes of your work is, um, well, is, is, is subversion and that, that sort of that's kind of made us quite a, a statement there. Can you just tell us a little bit about that? Yeah. Um... So I, I also wanted to say that sometimes your art no, might not be in museums or galleries straight away. Um, and actually one of the most exciting things I've ever done was um, a cat walk in an abandoned supermarket. Um, so this was a project. I don't know if there's any fashion fans out there, but I really love the Chanel fashion shows, but they're always an obscene production. We're talking um, just incredible set construction, lighting, music, all of that. Um, and there was one that Karl Lagerfeld did where he built a supermarket in the Grand Palais in Paris. And I just adored it. I thought it was the most exciting thing. Um, but I just knew that I'd never be able to do it. And then came this opportunity where somebody said to me, oh, there's this abandoned supermarket and Waltham Forest Council are looking for artists to do something. Would you be interested? Um, and I was like, yes, absolutely. But I have been thinking about sustainability. Uh, so I guess subversion in that sense. Um, so the Chanel shows are very slick. Um, the production that goes into the outfits, you have to think about how can I subvert this? So I worked with MA students from the London College of Fashion, as well as another artist called Alma Tischler Wood. And we... Um, spent a week making costumes and outfits and garments all from recycled fabrics um, and recycled materials so maybe they weren't um, that beautiful tweed or blue clay that um, Chanel uses but they look just as exciting if not more um, and we looked at how you can perform your sense of politics so uh, it was inspired by Brexit and actually a lot of the students uh, were from the EU um, so they would perform how they felt about Brexit and how, what that all meant and subversion is all about how you can flip things around how can you change the meaning um, 
So you asked about music and I listen to punk quite a lot, but I also listen to hip hop. And you have to think about how those are genres and scenes really kind of um, jump into the mainstream and flip it and reverse it. Okay, thank you very much. Yeah. Um, can you, so you work as an outreach practitioner at UAL currently. Can you tell us a little bit about how that came about and what you do in that role? Yeah, so um, I mentioned that my parents hadn't gone to university. So when I ended up at Chelsea, um, I was really shocked at how uh, there was a particular type of student at art school. Um, and if we're candid, we can say that it's an upper class person whose parents might have links already to the art world or have money enough to sustain them at university. Um, and I was quite taken aback because I was coming from Watford and I wanted to meet people that I wouldn't meet before, you know, like meet a real mix of people. And um, to cut a long story short, I went for the job because I'm really passionate that art schools are accessible for all. I think the art world should be accessible for all. I also mentor for a charity arts emergency that encourages young people um, from backgrounds where they may not be expected or encouraged to study at art school. Um, and I'm really, yeah, really keen that art schools are as inclusive and diverse as the world around, around them, the worlds that they situate themselves within. Um, so my job is all about um, encouraging young people from those backgrounds who might not necessarily uh, think that they can study art and design, but they totally can. And what's more, they bring uh, so much more to an art school than they might think they do. Um, so I love what I do. I spend my days going to schools and colleges. I do tutorials with students. Um, again, I really love coming to Southwark and doing those. Um, and I just kind of, I don't push upon anyone that art school is the end point for everyone but if you feel like you want to go then you you totally should feel like you can okay yeah that's great thank you yeah oh, i mean interestingly we in in southwark very much so in in art and design and but also in fashion and music and you know, creative media um we we've we've made quite a big decision to move to 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 um delivering uh ual diplomas because because mm -hmm. we really like the way that they're that they're written and they're very open and there's a, there's, a, there's a lot of there's a lot of freedom within the the briefs and we think that's really going to um that's that's going to be so interesting and exciting for students to do project kind of led work and um so and so this is a big quite a big turning point for us now in the the, the next year we're starting all those things from september we're really looking forward to it um so from your experience as a as a you know doing outreach um and as an educationalist what what would you say are the are the key um qualities skills experiences needed by students who want to work in some somewhere in in the art and design field um so I could be being completely ageist, but I think all young people have energy on their side. <laughs> I think, um, I don't know when my energy started to get less, but I definitely feel like it's less in lockdown. So bring energy to anything that you want to do um, and just a great attitude, be positive. Um, I think I come from a position as a teacher and as a person, it's important to have a growth mindset. So I'll never tell you that something's rubbish, but I'll tell you how you could do it better. Um, and I think in terms of that, maybe being open to how you can develop as a person and let yourself really grow. Um, I've been teaching this week and one of the students asked me, um, am I limiting myself? Am I, um, do you think I'm, I'm limiting myself? And I did that really annoying thing that teachers do where they turn the question back round. Mm -hmm. And I said, do you think you're limiting yourself? Um, and suddenly there was like this rush of, I hadn't realized, but probably I always knew that I was. So I think really keep um, your mindset and your, your attitude and your environment as much as you can, positive and open to whatever you want to happen. Um, turning up on time or slightly early oh it's really irritating I'm 
dyslexic, but it's a lesson I learned really early on that 70% of success is turning up on time. And then I say 80% is arriving a bit early. Um, so I really recommend that. It's a really annoying one, especially when you're a young person. You think, does it really matter? But it, it does. Um, keeping your promises. Um, so if you say to somebody that you're going to do something, do it. Um, but yeah, leave room for you. Um, always ensure that you're doing something that makes you happy, uh, especially in creative subjects, it really shows. Um, I think it's great that you're going to a UAL, UAL diploma because um, the project and the setup of those courses really allow for a personal approach to come into the work um, and for you to really use whatever medium you want to try out. Um, so I guess always be open, be positive, be energetic, um, and just be personable. Bring bring that friendliness that you would to anything. Uh, bring it to jobs. Bring it to the learning environment too. Um, I hope that makes sense. Yes, no, that's great. Thank you very much. Yeah. Um, gosh, uh, can you think of anything that? you've had to learn to do along the way that you would never have expected that you would have had to think about or consider or learn how to do? Yeah, when I was about 15, I managed to get some work experience at Pinewood Studios. And um, it was during, uh, it was with a special effects company. And so, first of all, I learned how to make really great teeth. Um, and that was like a real simple skill. Um, so good tea and good coffee, especially if you want to work in film and TV, the, the whole industry runs on caffeine. Um, so that's a really good skill. Um, one that's a bit more technical, but that you can learn uh, through online tutorials is Excel. Um, really, I never thought I'd be doing spreadsheets, but I seem to be doing them for everything that I do. So whether it's project management or even just working out my own taxes and everything like that. Um, learning Excel is a really great thing just to have on your CV. Most jobs will ask that you have it. So if you can use the lockdown period or a summer to just get your head around it, and it's not that hard actually, um, but it's just a real basic thing. Um, editing. Um, right. so we can all, um, if we all have camera phones, which fortunately we're in a world where most of us do, or we can borrow one or we've got access to some kind of recording equipment. Um, just iMovie is a really simple uh, space that you can learn and use um, to edit footage together. I saw a great film from a Southwark student actually last year that is still in my mind and used really simple um, editing techniques and just found footage that they'd found on YouTube and oh, it was great. Okay, oh, well, that's great to hear. Okay. Um, um, can you, what, what's the thing that you enjoy the most about your job and what's the thing that you enjoy the least, if there is something? <laughs> um, things that I enjoy the most are working with other people. Um, I also feel so lucky that I get to do something that I love. Um, people will tell you that um, there's not much money in art and design but again that's a mindset thing I think it is there um, so whether it's showing your work to interior designers mm -hmm. or thinking about where your um, artwork may go in a commercial sense is a kind of an uncomfortable thing to think about but a really good one um, I haven't always said yes to commissions um, but I think it's important that uh, young people know that commissions can be a really good and viable way to sustain your creative practice. Um, uh, the things that I probably don't enjoy, I'm not very good at schmoozing. So <laughs> there's this word schmoozing or networking mm -hmm. where perhaps you'll have to, uh, I don't like that idea of having to talk to someone with expectations. I'd rather make an honest and authentic uh, relationship with somebody. So I'd like to make a friend or um, 
just to have a human connection with somebody with no expectations. I hate the word networking, but my friends say I'm the most network networked person. But I think it's just because I, I'll talk to people. Um, and I really enjoy that bit. And I like listening to people. I like to hear what they're interested in. I love looking at different people's creativity and where they're coming from. Um, I perhaps don't like how um, easily some work can be dismissed. Um, I'm not somebody, it's taken me a while, but I'm not really interested in artworks that are trendy. I think if, if things take time to um, be absorbed and be appreciated, then that's, that's good. But I think, um, yeah, talk to people, be open don't really have um, expectations with people. Um, and actually as a person, I pick up on that. If somebody says, can I come and work with you? If it's a honest and interested connection, then that's great. But if they're expecting, you know, I don't know, something that I can't give, then it's never gonna work. Mm -hmm. um, how does that sound? Yes, no, that's really interesting, yes. Um, when you were at, um, when you were studying, doing your, your, your BA and, M, and your MA. Do you, were there people studying alongside you who you, who, who, um, you know, you're aware of that they went to work, they took a different route, they went to work in industry or something like that. Is, is that something you got any thoughts on at all? Absolutely. My best friend, as soon as we finished the degree, she went into insurance in the city <laughs> and, um, and again, in the past year, she's gone back to picking up painting. And I just find that so she has got to a point where, yes, she's got a career that's given her a financial reward, but she suddenly realized that the joy that she gets from making and just playing with paint is more fulfilling and rewarding than that bonus that comes in maybe once or twice a year. Um, so she went into insurance and then came back to art, which is an interesting one. I've got loads of friends who um, have gone into museum and gallery learning also. Um, mm. A lot of people that have gone into communications and um, one of our peers is quite high up at Vice, um, so the magazine, um, and he commissions videos and films. Um, somebody went into doing soundtracks so went a completely different path well not maybe that different but they were making visual work whereas now they make audio work um, and what may surprise you is that i think only 10 percent of people that were studying with me are probably still doing it and making it a career thing because sometimes if you think it doesn't happen straight away you might give up so that's another skill and a good thing to have within yourself is persistence mm. and commitment. Mm. Um, yeah. Commitment to your creativity. Right. Um, from, from what you were saying earlier, uh, at some point along the way, you, you made a decision to work in education as well. You went into the PGCE. So you thought, okay, that's a strand of income, but presumably as well, something that feeds into your, um, your practice as well. Yeah, I did my PG cert at UAL. Um, and it kind of helps me develop everything that I've been saying where I feel like the art world should be accessible. Mm. Um, we had to do some um, observations. So that's, you know, when you're a student and the teacher says, somebody's gonna sit at the back of the room, they're not looking at you, they're looking at me. Seriously, feel for your teacher because <laughs> it's a really odd experience. Um, but actually I learned so much and, um, I was doing a session. So another thing that I'm interested in is fashion illustration and life drawing. Mm -hmm. um, and I didn't particularly, I haven't continued life drawing um, consistently, but have dipped back into it now and then. And um, I was doing a live fashion illustration session when I was observed. And I worked with my um, models to come up with a soundtrack, uh, with the materials, what color, we would be using and what outfits they would be wearing as well um and the observation the person ob observ observing me said that it was one of the most exciting lessons they'd ever seen but it didn't really feel like a lesson um 
and maybe that's what I learned during the PGC um, is that my lessons don't really feel like lessons they feel a bit like experiences and that's okay um, and so that really um, is something that I'd like to continue with. That sounds very okay yes I think the idea of lessons that don't feel like lessons yeah that's a, that, sounds, <laughs> that sounds great yeah absolutely. Um, I've got a couple of questions coming in Rosemary. Mm. Uh, okay first one is from Jay. Um, was there any time that you felt that you couldn't do it, that you couldn't, uh, okay, was there any time that you felt that you couldn't achieve your, uh, your dream? Oh Jay, that's a really good question. I'm gonna have to dip back into the emotional archives and think, did I? Yeah, probably quite a lot. Um, I think pretty much before every exhibition there's this feeling of oh my goodness is this going to come together and then it does it always does um, and I've probably had a couple of moments where quite early on in my career where I didn't get jobs and I was told oh you're a bit too young or you need a bit more experience I think oh, where am I going to get this experience from um, but I just kept going um, and I kept being open to different opportunities along the way um, actually when I talk about fashion illustration so I studied fashion illustration on an evening course because I didn't know where I could go in in my own painting and my contemporary art anymore um so I guess I didn't stop I just switched gears a little bit mm. maybe I went down a path rather than carrying on on the motorway but then I came right. back on the motorway <laughs> okay okay great thank you yeah okay here's another question Okay, which is a very straightforward one, I think, possibly, and it is, do you show, do you show kids, well, that's what it says, do you show kids around museums and workplaces? <laughs> yeah, um, I'm pretty sure that I've got some funny stories somewhere of where I've shown people around, um, or I can tell you quite a good story that I told my students yesterday. So, um, uh, when I was working for Tate, um, we would show um, toddlers and their mums around the galleries during nice quiet hours of the day uh, and once we were doing a session mm. and I was with the group on the other side mm. um, and I don't know if anybody's seen Anish Kapoor has these sculptures that are stacked spices like piles of spices and piles of pigments that are really precisely done they're just stunning precise beautiful well, you can imagine what happens. So I'm showing around some toddlers and uh, in I take them into another room and then in the main space where the Anish Kapoor ones is, a toddler is just so excited by seeing this work that they decide to run and hug it. <laughs> and of course it just goes everywhere. And um, a couple of the gallery people said, oh, well, it's because there's that learning session on and it wasn't, it was somebody else. But I've had plenty of moments where people have been so bowled over oh there was a little kid who had a Monet water lilies um placemat so every day she'd been eating from this visual of Monet's water lilies and she went into Tate Modern and there it was and again she couldn't believe that there was this massive version of her food plate and she ran over and hugged it and of course all the noises and sounds went crazy um I've also worked where I've shown blind people around a gallery and I've had to describe the work right. um, and Tate have a really beautiful collection of drawings done by contemporary artists which are raised that um, people with visual impairments can then touch um, and can kind of sense their way around the work um, and that's something where you so suddenly realize how art isn't just about a visual it's about something within um, and how special that is right okay yes, that's really interesting um, well, i should actually say um if you are interested in showing um people around museums and galleries tate have a really great volunteer program um and you become part of the tate team so you'll get a staff card which means that you'll be able to go into the exhibitions for free um it's a really great um initiative you also get to go on the boat for free as well. Um, mm -hmm. So if you are interested about learning how to talk about artworks as well, 
I'm sure that they'd be so interested in hearing from local, um, you know, students that are studying near there. So do have a look. It's all online. It's the Tate Volunteer Programme. Okay, yeah, that's great. Thank you. Yes, that would be a great opportunity for our for our students. Yeah, uh, you know, we're, we're we are very lucky. I think it's, you can walk in about seven minutes to the to the to the modern. It's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> um, okay, so here's another question, which is: Is art your dream job? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think um, because I think with art you can do anything. So. I think when I was younger, I really enjoyed dance and performance, but I also loved painting, but I also loved piling up petals and making sculptures in the garden and, and drawing on the walls, much to my dad's annoyance. Um, and art has actually made all those things really valid and encouraged. So yeah, art is definitely my dream. Um, yeah. <laughs> is it yours? <laughs> Okay, um, okay, so here and here is, oh, so this might be someone who missed the beginning of this session possibly because they've just said, what is your, what is your job role? I wonder if it's possible to summarise that in, I don't know, 50 words or less or something. Yeah, yeah. so my job role as an artist is uh, whatever I want it to be. Um, so I can, I create and it's up to me how I create, but alongside that I support my practice by um, being a writer and lecturer. So writing about art, talking about art and helping others make art, um, whether that's in a university, a school, a college, a museum or gallery. Um, yeah. Great. OK, thank you. Yeah. OK, this is good. Have you ever given up on any art pieces because you weren't pleased with the outcome? Definitely. Um, but something that I've been encouraging my students to do and that I've actually done myself is to not bin them but to park them. So if you're not sure about something, don't give up on it in that moment, but don't give up on it forever. So put it on a wall, put it in a drawer, put it on a shelf. Uh, just know that it's there. Uh, there's even some artworks that I've shown where I've not been sure about them, but I've put them out there. And then even now I'm revisiting stuff that I made um, probably about 10 years ago because suddenly I'm like actually that's what I could do with it um, so don't give up on anything um, and also I know that you're encouraged to think of things as a final piece um, and that everything you're working towards is this final piece and then that project's done but maybe it's more useful to think of this as just part of your artistic body and that um, this is just part of a collection of artworks that you're going to make as an artist and that's okay. So um, I think about what you need to fulfill the brief of your exam or of your studies or of your exhibition or whatever you're trying to achieve with this artwork, but also know that that's not the last artwork you'll ever make, uh, that there'll be other things. Um, yeah, I hope that helps. Okay, great. Thank you very much. Um, Ah, okay. Was there any other job that you wanted to do? Um, I probably, so there was a point when I was studying um, foundation and I didn't know whether it would be art, fine art or textiles. And I kind of thought about fashion. And then to be honest, I've been involved in the fashion industry in different spaces and moments and kind of worked out why I preferred the art world um, but I've kept it as a source of inspiration and I still love the fashion world um, but I just know that my role within it probably isn't as a designer um, so yeah I think hope yeah I think that answers that one okay great thank you yes um, well I think we're coming to the end of our time Rosemary uh, I've, I've got another question if I may in that Obviously, quite a lot of our, our students tend to be, you know, they're, they're, they're 17 or 18, mostly when they come to us uh, to start studying. Um, if, if you could, is there anything that you, that, you, that you know now that you'd tell your 17-year-old self? Uh, yeah, any advice that you would be able to give? Yeah, I think I'd definitely tell myself the tip about being on time. Um, if I'd have learned that quicker <laughs> I wouldn't have missed the start of talks or the starts of things um, and I maybe 
uh, would have just had a bit more time and space with things. I also, so I obviously had the initiative to look up um, museums and galleries and what opportunities they had for young people. And I really urge you to do the same, but also have a look at art schools and universities and see what they offer. So I work on the programme Insights for UAL. And what we offer um, people that are eligible for us is such a great opportunity. We give you free materials, um, free tutorials, free workshops, all ways that you can build your portfolio um, and learn about whether art school is for you. Um, so have a look at Insights. Um, there is, um, we've kind of finished our summer programme, but autumn, winter will be back open. And I just wish I'd, I'd use that energy that I had. So don't worry about what other people think um, and keep on your path and keep thinking about what you want to do, what really is your calling. Um, and maybe you'll have bumps along the way, but that's okay. That's with everything in life. And you've just got to keep committed um, and keep on that flow. Okay, great. Thank you very much indeed. Rosemary, thanks very much for your time today. It's been really interesting. I think our students will have found that really helpful and interesting too. Um, I'm, I'm, there's been loads of questions there. Um, if you want to, um, feel free to look me up on Instagram. You can see more of my work. Um, and if there was anything, because I was sometimes the person as a young person and still as an adult, where I'll think of a question to ask maybe next week um, and maybe uh, you might be a bit too scared to ask online as well um, so feel free to email me or email John who can pass it on um, if there's anything that you really want to ask I'm always here okay that's great thank you that's really nice okay thanks very much for your time Rosemary and thanks, we'll say John. goodbye for now and thank you for everybody who's uh, who's logged in to listen and watch today Thanks, everyone. Lovely to meet you and have a good, safe rest of the lockdown. Okay. Bye for now. Bye. <laughs>